Uh, he needs a lot of love and validation. I need a ton, and I don't get it. <laughs> I just get broken down <laughs> all the time. Even the dog breaks me down. Welcome to the Pod Sound School podcast, people, the number one place for all things podcasting. I'm your host, Veronica. And I'm your second favorite host, Studio Steve. And today we're going to be talking about Facebook groups and crowdfunding. This is what we're going to cover, the difference between Facebook pages and Facebook groups, why as a podcaster you should consider having a Facebook group, the difference between Facebook groups and crowdfunding groups, and what are some of the Facebook groups that as a podcaster you should be part of. If you're not yet talking about Facebook groups, we're trying to grow our Facebook group and we're willing to do anything. Yes, almost anything. <laughs> to bring anything. new members, uh-huh. almost anything. <laughs> uh, uh, legal stuff. Yes. Uh, but since Halloween is approaching, the Pod Sound School wants to be part of the festivities. And starting this week, we're going to have a Halloween contest going on over our Facebook group. Yes, Podcasting for Bosses. Podcasting for Bosses. Uh-huh. And you guys want to be part of this contest because the prizes are a custom-made jingle by Steven. And yeah, so you'll get your own personalized custom... Personalized custom jingle for your podcast. For your podcast. And that comes with uh, three concepts and then one revision on the main concept you decide to go with. So. Ooh, he's mm-hmm. being generous. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other thing that you guys will get, the winner will get, is a social media strategy from me. For Instagram and Twitter. That yes. Steven will help me with the Twitter strategy. Uh-huh, so that's a pretty cool prize. Uh-huh, it's a pretty mm-hmm. cool prize. Um, so the contest, like we uh, mentioned, is exclusively for members of our Facebook group, Podcasting for Buses. So if you guys are not members yet, go and join the group. And also, so you can be in the know with all the details of the contest. Yes. It's going to be pretty fun. It's going to be pretty fun. And the winner is going to be announced very late on Halloween. On Halloween. And uh, the details of the contest, do we want to talk about those here or do they go to the no, Facebook group? No, not yet. Okay. You guys need to go to the you Facebook You got to join group. the Facebook group to find the join details the of the contest. Join the Facebook group and tell your friends. It's going to be very yes. fun. I'm looking forward to that. And also, you'll be able to see Veronica and I in our costumes, <laughs> which will be fun. So without any further ado, Facebook groups and Facebook pages, 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 Facebook groups. That's a lot more than I bargained for, but I'll have fun with that one. Okay. So one of the questions that we were presented with was whether we should have a Facebook page or a Facebook group. Mm hmm. So we're going to start with the difference between those two. Okay. Facebook pages. So Facebook created Facebook pages to enable public figures, businesses, organizations, and other entities to create a public presence on Facebook. So unlike personal profiles, Facebook pages are public and visible to anyone on the internet by default. And every person on Facebook can connect with these pages by hitting the like button. And by liking the page, you will start receiving updates in your news feed. Although Facebook pages are meant for business and organizations, they can only be created by a person directly or either a representative of of the business or an organization or public figure. So you can create a Facebook page directly on Facebook Or when you create your Instagram account and if you decide to do a business Instagram account, then Instagram would prompt you to create a Facebook page. The downsides of Facebook pages is that they're not designed to promote interaction with your followers. And also people can find it a little intimidating to interact with a business page. So business pages are mostly to promote new products, new services, in the case of a podcast, new episodes, but they're not meant to create a community. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, okay, so then let's talk about Facebook groups. So Facebook created Facebook groups as a place for people to communicate, express their opinion, and affiliate with other people with same interests. Groups allowed people to come together around a common cause, issue, or activity to organize, express objectives, discuss issues, post photos, and share related content. When you create a Facebook group, you can decide whether to make it publicly available for anyone to join or require administrator approval for members to join or keep it private and by invitation only. Mm -hmm. Facebook groups are very interesting to me because you can have your own rules. There's Facebook groups for anything. There's political groups. Yeah. Uh, there's groups around certain sports. Yeah, but church, high school church, teams, athletic else. teams. So that's good. And then this makes me wonder, and I think especially when we were first getting into podcasting, I wouldn't have even thought about having a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. You know, like what if you had a movie review podcast or even a D&D &D podcast or mm -hmm. something that is more entertaining or an audio drama podcast? Mm -hmm. Why would a podcaster, that type of podcaster, consider having a Facebook group? And that's even better if you have a movie review podcast or if you have a D&D &D podcast. Mm -hmm. This is one of the ways that you can know who your followers and supporters are. Yes. If you start asking them on your podcast, come and join our Facebook group, then you'll see all these people, you know, this person, like last week, eight people, 10 people join my Facebook group. And this is the only way I'm asking them to join is because they're listeners. Now yeah. I can, you know, say that Stephen Davis is a listener that, you know, mm -hmm. so and so and is then it's a by really... name and face. And you can click on their Facebook profiles and go see how they look like, uh -huh. what they like, uh -huh. you know, what are the, what some of the things that they post, some of their personal uh, Facebook profiles, they're uh, open to the public. Yeah. And then you know that they are interested in your show because they wouldn't have joined if they weren't. Yeah, they wouldn't. And then the other thing is it's a great source for market research mm -hmm. and it's a great source for not only market research and understanding more your ideal listener because mm -hmm. as Veronica just said, you can go and actually see their Facebook page mm -hmm. so you can get an idea of who your listeners are, mm -hmm. like what their interests are and things like that. But then you can also run surveys and ask direct questions yeah. in your Facebook group. You can get people involved, ask for them to be contributors of your podcast mm -hmm. and hey, what should our next episode be about mm -hmm. or run competitions. We're going to have one of our listeners be a guest on our episode. Episode mm -hmm. or, lots or should of I have, there. you know, my next episode, I'm thinking about my next episode being this or this, which one do you think it will be mm -hmm. more beneficial or, or, or more fun or. And it's just a great place to effectively and directly communicate mm -hmm. and entertain your listeners. And we all want it. We as humans, we are driven by affiliation and be part of, of something. We yeah. want to be part of something. It's we want to be part of a community. Mentality. It's that tribe mentality yeah. that. I imagine there's this uh, Facebook group. So there's this, you know, podcast about true crime. You want to be around your people, your weirdos yeah. who like true crime. <laughs> who like the true and crime. you want a platform, a forum that you can express your feelings about certain case. You can talk about mayhem and blood and guts being spilled and mm -hmm. body parts being found in different places, locations mm -hmm. with the people that are going to be receptive to that kind of... <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's move on to... Facebook group best practices. <laughs> 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 so, number one, focus on community instead of self-promotion. Like the rest of your social media content, your Facebook group should center in creating a community and not a place for exclusively promoting your podcast episodes. Yeah. If and you're going to do that, if you're going to exclusively promote your podcast episodes and you don't want to hear from or interact with your community, then create a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. But if you want that sense of community and grow your community, then you should create a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing, number two, is create a safe environment for people to express themselves and their ideas. 
watch and protect this at all costs. You don't want bullies. You don't want things getting out of hand where people are getting overly passionate about certain topics and insulting other people. And you want to provide a safe place for people to interact and express their ideas freely. Yes. With that being said, you need to be assertive because it's your group. Yeah, it's your group. Uh huh. So number three, be genuine with your interactions. Don't create a group and just forget about the group and never say a word or never interact with any of your of the members of the group and show genuine interest. And you'll be surprised, like all the interesting people that you can come across. Yeah. So number four, provide your members with exclusive content and access to content or events not accessible for non-members. So you want to make this group, you don't have to go overboard, but you want to give the members of your group the sense that they belong to a VAP kind of thing. Like provide those little extra things or extra content or something like a bonus for the members of your group. Number five, be very clear and strict with the group rules. They tell people what to expect from the group from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get, unfortunately, on the Facebook groups. This is another thing that I would recommend to do, depending on the kind of podcast that you have. I think you should consider to make it close, to make it a private Facebook group. And people can join only by you approving their request to join your group don't make it open because that way you get a lot of spam you get people who are not interested in in your podcast or in your services or Mm -hmm. your products but they're interested in taking away your group members from you or to sell their things or to promote their things but they're not interested in what you have to offer so that's why i would even though it's gonna be hard to grow it at the beginning and you're not gonna see big numbers to to start with It's better to know that that group of 10 people are people that really like you and Mm -hmm. want to hang out in your Facebook group, that they don't have an agenda. So that's another thing. And then just be clear with the rules. Number six. Six. Yep, number six. uh, Having a Facebook group is time consuming. So be sure you designate time each week to interact and nurture your group. You can schedule posts to save time and make sure that you take a few minutes to interact uh, and set the tone of the conversations in your group. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to post every day, but just make sure that you are present on your Facebook group Mm -hmm. every week. Uh, If they ask for help, give them help. If they have questions, try to answer their questions or try to provide the resources that they Mm -hmm. need to answer their questions yeah Um, and then number seven is as your group grows you can designate people mm -hmm. within your group to help you monitor provide content and start conversations Mm -hmm. which is really cool yeah there's a way that you can see the insights the statistics of your facebook group and then it shows the top contributors Mm -hmm. Uh, you can you can reward those top contributors contributors. and then you can even approach those top contributors and say hey would you want to be an administrator for my Mm -hmm. facebook group and that's wonderful You could get a couple administrators managing your Facebook group for you. Mm -hmm. And they're your super fans. Yeah. Oh, and I already mentioned this one. Don't be afraid to remove people who are breaking the rules. Uh Yeah, that would be number eight. Uh Don't be afraid to remove people who break the rules Mm -hmm. or that aren't nice to your other members. Uh Get them out of there. Yeah. And then number nine would be to create a space where members can share their work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's cool. And that's a, a great practice. You see that on a lot of Facebook groups where it's, that's one of the rules when they're joining is this isn't a place to promote, but we will have posts for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about crowdfunding. Yes. The big benefit of crowdfunding is monetization. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that word monetization. La platica. La platica. La platica que viene y va en el bolsillo. Oh. <laughs> But, you know, an increasing number of radio personalities have quit their jobs and now use crowdfunding to finance their own productions. There are so many success stories about this. And it's sort of this new business model of podcasting that is kind of erupting as podcasting continues to grow, which is really cool. And I'm sure you've heard of lots of different crowdfunding platforms 
The most popular ones would be Kickstarter, GoFundMe, and then Patreon, I think is my favorite for podcasts. Kickstarter is kind of like a one-time deal. Same with GoFundMe. You know, you put out a project that you want to produce and you have a goal. And once you complete that goal, you get paid kind of a thing. Whereas Patreon is more of a membership service. And I'm sure you're constantly hearing on podcasts, you know, come over and check out our Patreon page. And it's because it works really well for podcasters. So just a couple little interesting things about Patreon. Patreon right now, I just checked it before this episode, is giving a monthly payout to podcasters of $1.6 million a month that Patreon is paying out to podcasters, which is pretty cool. And they have over 800,000 individual pledges that are happening every month to podcasters, which is pretty cool. There is this really cool article by LimeLink, and we'll leave the link to it in this episode's description. It's called Analysis of Top Earning Podcasts on Patreon. The top performing podcasts in his article and on Patreon right now is Chapo Trap House, and they make like over $110,000 a month on their podcast, which is incredible. That's insane. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you go down the list quite a bit, though, you see like Not Another D&D podcast, and they make $20,000 a month. That's incredible. That can fund many people. (laughs) But the other thing that he does at the end of the articles, he shows how you can, can I do podcasting as my full-time job? Well, he's like, well, if uh, like a single person, you'd need about $3,000 a month to survive. He gives some examples of podcasts that are making that just from Patreon. Uh, there's She's All Fat, Not a Podcast, and Podcast the Ride are all podcasts that make about $3,000 a month from their patrons. So that's pretty interesting, I thought. And it's definitely possible. You know, I think there's this question, can I make money with my podcast? And yeah, there's it's totally possible. So now let's talk about some best practices and some good Patreon practices that you can do to attract more patrons. Mm -hmm. First, we'll talk about like ideas you can offer your patrons, bonus episodes. That's the most common thing. And this is so cool on Patreon, their own individual RSS link. And what's really cool is once they, if they decide not to be your patron anymore, their RSS link goes away. And it's just kind of magic. And it feels really special to have access to your own The public doesn't have access to this RSS feed. So you have your own podcast playing on your podcast player, which is pretty cool. But other ideas you can do is Q&A or AMA, Ask Me Anything sessions that they get. With that, you could do live chats and hangouts. Some people do. They'll actually mix their Patreon with a Facebook group. And you're only allowed into the Facebook group if you're a patron, which is cool. And that's where you have these live chats and hangouts or ask me anything sessions. Mm -hmm. You could do behind the scenes content, which is a lot of what we do. We haven't really put a lot of bonus episodes out yet because our Patreon account is still growing, but we do plan on putting more bonus episodes out. But we have a lot of behind the scenes on our Patreon, which are fun. And we also have some origin stories of Veronica on there as well. You could do new shows or just a whole different branch of a a different show that you do. An example of that would be, we're always talking about Tango with Veronica. Well, we could actually make Tango with Veronica, the the show, or I could do like a audio drama with Studio Steve show or something. And you have access to that with Patreon. And then of course you could do physical merchandise. But with the physical merchandise, you want to be careful. Like for example, let's say it costs you $20 to make a t-shirt and you offer that to your $2 patrons. Well, it's going to take them 10 months to pay for that one t-shirt for you to even start profiting from that. So don't offer things that you can't deliver Mm -hmm. and be careful what you offer. You could also make a little disclaimer in that saying our $2 tiers will get a free t-shirt after they've been with us for three months and things like that. And Patreon offers some reminder. You get reminded when certain people sign up for certain tiers. It's really fun. It does require a little bit of learning. And some other examples besides t-shirts when it comes to physical merchandise is if you wrote a book and you happen to have a book, you can send a signed copy to the high tier patrons. Uh, You can give, if you have a merch store, um, which a lot of podcasters have set up, then your patrons can get a 20% off code of all of your merchandise. If you don't have any merchandise, but you want to put something in the mail for new users, you can do a handwritten thank you card or postcard. Those are really popular. It's all about personalizing it and actually uh, lifting that veil of social media and the podcasting, actually 
becoming friends with your patrons because they love you and they want to become your super fans, right? The other thing you can offer is fan recognition. And you hear this all the time on podcasts. We do it ourselves, which is shout outs. People mm-hmm. love to be shouted out. It's really magic, you know, when you've been listening to a podcast and all of a sudden you hear them shout out your name. Mm-hmm. In our case, it's cool because a, a lot of our patrons are podcasters. So mm-hmm. we also send or attempt to send traffic over to their podcast as well and give their podcast a little bit of love. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, so that's... So join our Patreon. Yeah. So while we're talking about it, come find us. It's, we call it our Overachievers Club. Mm-hmm. And come find us over on Patreon. It's a way for you to help us continue to provide all this free content for podcasters. And then, you know, how do you find patrons once you set up a patron is one, ask. We were so bad at that with <laughs> yes. everything at first. Yeah, it's funny because we started asking and then people started to join. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. We didn't ask people to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We didn't ask people to comment or rate our podcast. We didn't ask people to find us on Patreon. Once we started asking, we started getting patrons. Mm-hmm. So just ask. That's the first thing. So the- do we have any fans out there? Reveal yourselves. Yes. Reveal thyselves. Reveal thyselves. And then it's really the same as anything, like the same way you want to have attract more listeners is the same way you're going to attract more patrons is to really have an idea of who your ideal listener is. Do a ton of market research, find out what they want. You're starting a special club, right? So you can imagine if you were to have a clubhouse for your podcast, a physical location, what are your fans going to want to do there? What, what kind of bonus content are they is really going to appeal to them mm-hmm. and figure that out. And then make it easy for them to find you over on Patreon. So we're Put always it everywhere. We're always talking about your link in bio or your website link on Twitter. Make sure that you have a landing page that not only provides a quick link for all of your podcast directories, but put your Patreon link there too. Even put it at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, have we? <laughs> I don't know if we have. <laughs> well, shit. Hey, you know what? Sometimes we wind up giving advice to ourselves, you know? So I'm going to make sure I go and add our Patreon page to our landing page to make it easy for you guys to find us. Because I know that you've been trying to support us. You just can't find us over on Patreon. Yes. The other thing... Reveal thyself. The other thing you could do without being overly public radio pledge drive with it is to just quickly tell people how to get over to Patreon and tell them, you know, you're going to have to set up a Patreon account and there's a lot of cool creators over there and you can come check us out and see the free content that we offer there. That's something that people do on Patreon too is provide some free content over there and uh, you can create a forum there that people can talk and it's kind of a place you can hang out and talk about your podcast without even having to become a paying patron. And then you really need to treat your podcast like it's the most important thing in the world. You know, you really need to believe in yourself Mm -hmm. and think that you are super cool. And when you do... Because you are. Because you are. And and know that what you have to offer is valuable and that people want more Mm -hmm. of you. Cool. Why don't we finish off if you would give us one more soundbite, Veronica. Facebook groups to join. Yeah? Yeah, I liked that. Facebook groups to join. But you're kind of doing like a musical thing. Facebook groups to join. Shh. Facebook Shh. groups Shh. to join for podcasters. Mm. Podcasters. Mm. Facebook Fa- group to join. join. Facebook group to join for podcasters. We talked about Facebook groups, crowdfunding. Now let's discuss some Facebook groups that you should be part of ASAP. Yes. yes. So the first one, well, of course, we're going to promote our Facebook group, Podcasting for Buses, because why not? This yeah, is our podcast. Yeah, you got to come over there. Podcasting for Buses. Uh-huh, it's podcasting really cool for group. Buses. Come and join. We do a Thursday pod audit, mm-hmm. usually. And then actually now we're going to be doing social media audits. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this Thursday, I'm going to be auditing some Instagram accounts. Uh huh. So hopefully you can join the group. Always and- come over there. It's a great place to where we can learn from each other. Mm-hmm. And that's why we like to do these audits in the group, because our group members really love them and the people we the podcasters that we've audited have found it to be very useful Mm -hmm. and it's also a way to kind of promote your show a little bit too and get uh, a few more listeners Uh Mm -hmm. and also we have a goal that we want to meet before the year ends and that's to have 500 members of our group right Mm -hmm. now we have 174 yeah 174 174 members so we have a long ways to go but we are positive and we are we have faith that we're going to 
meet this goal before the year mm-hmm. ends. So help me out. Yeah, and then another, aside from podcasting for bosses, mm-hmm. you, you, another one is Independent Podcasters Group. Mm-hmm. That's Joe Pardo's group, which is yes, you definitely got it. Like, I like Joe Pardo's yeah. group a lot. He's very involved in his group, mm-hmm. and he's always posting questions and helping people out. He has also Facebook Lives every week, mm-hmm. and he's he knows a lot about podcasting. Yeah. Then there's also the Podcaster Support Group, mm-hmm. which has 18,000 members. 18,000 members, yes. Uh-huh. There's also She Podcasts mm-hmm. with, with 14,000 members. Mm-hmm. Great podcast group to so join. If you're, yeah, so if you're a woman, a, a podcaster. Mm-hmm. That's especially that's one you'd want to join. Yeah, you want to join that one. And then there's Buzzsprout podcasting community. You know Buzzsprout, a lot of people love using Buzzsprout for their podcast host. Mm-hmm. They also have a Facebook group, which is really yeah. cool. 4,000 followers there. And then there's Podcast Movement. Podcast Movement is the podcast convention, mm-hmm. also with a pretty active and cool Facebook group. Podcasters Hangout, go check that out. And Podcasters Lounge, mm-hmm. which is Chris Coran's podcaster group, mm-hmm. which is a really cool group as well. And of course, like we always do, we'll be leaving the links to all these groups in this episode's description. Mm -hmm. So we expect to see you over at our Podcasting for Bosses Facebook group immediately after concluding this episode. And before you go, remember to write a review for our podcast Mm -hmm. and to give us a rate. That's very important. Yes, and please come say hi to us on social media. If you're launching a podcast, if you're struggling with your podcast, let us know what you're struggling with. Tell us what your podcast is Mm -hmm. called. Send us your link through a direct message and we'll come check you out and give you some love. We'll give you a rating. Mm -hmm. And you can find Veronica on Instagram or me on Twitter at Pod Sound School. Yes, follow me on Instagram. Uh Uh-huh. And, you know, Veronica is the most popular of the two hosts here at Pod Sound School. But I could really use a little validation. I don't get enough of it at home. Follow me. So it'd be really nice if, you know, you could come hit me up on Twitter and be like, Follow me. You're my favorite studio, Steve. Follow, follow me. I don't know why she insists on this Andrew Lloyd, Veronica follow me. music, the follow me music. Follow but. me, people. Okay. Okay, well, hey, you guys. Oh, wait, I have another thing to say. What was it? I forgot. Ah, oh, it's a shame. D- also, don't forget to share the Pod Sound School with everybody and their dog. Yes. Share us with the world. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, until next time, happy casting, people. Happy casting, people. amigos. Happy casting, amigos. Happy casting amigos. Happy casting amigos. It's merengue. Mm-hmm.